What is going on, Governors? Just cool here, and today we're going to talk about Hannibal Barca, who is exceptional if you are rallying other players. Oh my goodness, is he scary in that context? We've got a ton of commander guides coming, and when the new commanders come out, we're going to cover them the day they go live. So you should totally like and subscribe if you are into commander guides, and we are sponsored by the creators of Rise of Civilizations. So with that said, when we do a commander guide, there's a couple things we cover. We first read all the skills, and yes, even I need to read them carefully because sometimes I mess up or misunderstand exactly what they do. From there, those skills will inform the talents that you might choose, and we'll make some recommendations. We'll then talk about how you unlock this commander, and this is kind of a unique one. And then we'll talk about the pairings that I personally would recommend. So strap yourselves in, a lot to cover, and let's start by reading these skills. The first skill does a direct damage factor max of 400 to a single target, then decreases the target's damage by a maximum of 25%, and a defense reduction of 25% for a solid 5 seconds. Pretty exceptional first skill. Next skill when Hannibal's army contains two different types of units, all damage is increased by a max of 5%. If the army contains three different types of units, all damage is increased by a max of 10%. Now, uh, important to note that different types of swordsmen, or rather uh, warriors, don't, don't count. Different types of cavalry doesn't count. You've got to have, like, cavalry infantry, archers, and siege units. Those are four different types of units. Now, this skill tells us a lot about what you're supposed to do with this commander. You are supposed to have a mixed army. This is going to be super relevant for a lot of stuff that we talk about. And when do you most frequently have and want a mixed army? When you're rallying stuff. All right, next skill. When attacking other governor's garrisons, and I did check in on this, and this is city garrisons, Hannibal has a 10% chance to heal an amount of slightly wounded units for a max healing factor of 1,000. The next skill increases the troop capacity by an upwards of 10%, and when battling outside of Alliance territory, increases the damage of all of Hannibal's troops by a upwards of 15% for 3 seconds after using a skill. So this once again points to the fact that Hannibal should be on enemy territory in order to get the most bang for your buck. The final skill is the expertise skill obtained when you have every other skill maxed. And it takes that first skill and makes it, well, pretty freaking excellent. Instead of doing direct damage factor of 400 to a single target, it also now deals additional damage factor 300 to three targets in a forward direction, um, which is amazing. It decreases the damage of those targets and defense um, as well. So it's not just uh, damaging them, but it's also reducing the damage they then deal and their defense. Huge. Huge, huge, huge. This is actually a very, very exceptional expertise skill. I would say better than average. So with all of that said, with all of that said, these point us to Hannibal being a commander that is optimal for attacking player cities, for leading rallies against those targets, and being on enemy territory. Let's take a look at the talents, because I think these are pretty interesting. Here we go. The Conquering Tree, the Attack Tree, and the Leadership Tree. Now, my friends, if you are attacking player cities, the Conquering Tree is designed for that activity. You've heard me talk about this a lot in recent videos. I would make my way to Tier of Blessing. I would not get well-provisioned or thoroughbreds off to the side, stick to the main required talents, and you could be really happy with what you've picked up. There are a couple other talents that I think are really important to supplement. One is the Rage restoration from Hidden Wrath, but before that, I would make my way first to Burning Blood, Lord of War, 
and assuming these are going to be long rallies against player cities, these are going to be reinforced rallies, then you definitely should be picking up Effortless. Effortless is insane for battles that are long, and by the way, I've got a ton of footage of maxed out Hannibals in action from my war videos recently. Throughout this video, I'll have cards up in the top to footage of war where you can see this bad boy in action. Now, if you are using Hannibal for rallying something other than cities, which is a fine choice for Hannibal, I want to caution you that you should be one of the strongest players in your alliance. You should probably be a T5 player if you are the person using Hannibal to rally objectives. Why is that? Because the tech is essential. And again, card in the top for a video where you can see just how important that tech is. So, if you are using Hannibal to rally objectives that are not player cities, you are definitely going to want to make your way to Name of the King. Along the way, you'll get a whole bunch of required talents. With the additional talent points that you have, you want to very rapidly make your way to Burning Blood, Lord of War, and once again, Effortless. I also really like Armed to the Teeth and Armored to the Teeth because you're going to have mixed armies and getting an additional percent of damage dealt and damage reduction for a talent point to pop is really, really strong. Now, with that said, if you are using Hannibal for open field combat, and I think that's a fine choice, right? I think that's a fine choice. If we look at his skills, um, these are fine for open field combat. In fact, there's some advantages to having a mixed army for open field combat. You'll be limited a little bit in your commander pairings, but we'll talk about that in a second and maybe some ways to get around that. So if we go back to those talents for open field combat, I am once again very interested in Burning Blood and Lord of War. I'm also very interested in Hidden Wrath. It, crucial to open field combat is getting the march speed talents, and then since you're there, I would get strategic prowess. From there, I would make my way to close formation, potentially picking up armored to the teeth and armed to the teeth along the way, and the thing you don't actually need for purely open field combat is the name of the king. Uh, because, look, if you're leading rallies, you need to be the alpha. Um, and so you're going to be using a slightly different build for that. And honestly, actually, I'll, I'll say there's a lot of overlap between the build I was just recommending for uh, rallying objectives that are not cities and open field combat. Um, but look, if you want to be using Hannibal, you're not the alpha in your alliance. You shouldn't be the one leading rallies, so you don't need Name of the King, um, and you know I'd focus in other places. If you are an alpha and are doing open field combat, you could consider the attack tree. Why is that? Because with your T5s and your advanced tech, you're going to be smashing people's armies, and you're actually going to get a ton of benefit from this talent over here, Victory Charge. When armies led by this commander defeat an army, not including garrisons, um, their attack gets increased. Yes, this is something that is quite strong if you are beating down your enemies. Something that you've heard me struggle with in many videos is last stand. Normal troop attacks have a percent chance to cause its commander's troops to go on a rampage, increasing damage by some percentage for the next three seconds, but the skills cannot be used for the duration of this effect. This seems weird to me. If you are that strong alpha player, you're going to be beating other people down because you're probably using two legendaries and your skills are really good. So I don't know that last stand is the thing that you want to be picking up in that case. All right, we took a pretty good look at the talents here. Key to this commander is having a mixed army. And just to call your attention to something really quickly, in terms of synergy with other commanders, in terms of pairings, you're going to want to take advantage of this healing herbs uh, talent if we can, we'll try to find a way to do that because Hannibal has some healing, but there are other commanders that would offer some healing. So with that said, who are some commanders that are really good for sieging player cities and reward you for having a mixed army or certainly don't penalize you for it? And I would be looking as an alpha player smashing other people's cities heavily at Julius Caesar um, potentially with Julius Caesar as the primary, since he's going to increase your attack uh, as well as increase damage. So you have that go first, then you have Hannibal Barca's attack hit. I think that would be really excellent. He doesn't have healing, 
uh, but he's doing a lot of other things that I think synergize really well with Barca. Another option that I think is really excellent would be Frederick the First. I covered him recently. He does some really awesome stuff. You'll notice he's got no specific troop type that he cares about. He does have healing, so you could take advantage of the talent for healing if you picked that up. One final commander that you would be taking a look at if you're sieging player cities, and for an alpha player, this really would be more in the early game than the late game, uh, but you could use a commander like Sepio, who is going to offer you some amount of healing, some amount of extra damage to governor cities, um, and some tankiness. There's a few other options you could consider, such as Boudica and Joan of Arc, because they don't specialize in a specific type of troop. But that is really not a plan that I'm very enthusiastic about for attacking player cities. Now, for open field combat, you've got some interesting pairings for our good friend Hannibal. And, you know, one thing I want to talk about is a potential way around this uh, development tactics, or sorry, envelopment tactics, um, which is that you could have a small number of different types of units in your army. And assuming that all of those units die off evenly, if all of those units become injured evenly um, or as or by percentage, then it might end up being fine, right? Like you might end up having like, you know, let's say you bring 50 cavalry, 50 archers, and all infantry. Like maybe that works. I haven't tested it, so I can't say I would recommend it highly. Um, and like, look, the thing you want to be doing with Hannibal Barca, in my opinion, is if you're not attacking player cities, to take advantage of the fact that he's offering huge troop capacity. Now, because this is a pay-to-play commander, you probably, I'm going to assume, have some other commanders in a really good position that increase your troop capacity. And once again, it's the same commanders we were looking at before. We're talking about Julius Caesar, Frederick, and also Scipio. Pop an army expansion, and oh my goodness, you are going to have so many troops on the battlefield, it is going to be tough to tango with you, especially with your tech advantage, your research advantage that you're going to have over other players. Now, with that said, you heard me say this in recent videos, for these skills that increase your troop capacity, if you're doing open field combat, it's very important that you go back to town and to sort of heal back up, heal all of those injured troops, so that you actually have more troops than other players. If you stay out for too long, your army is going to get weaker, and I totally get that skills like Patient Warrior reward you for that, skills like uh, Divine Julius reward you for being somewhat injured, but your plan should not to purposefully get into those states. Um, your plan should be to keep your army so much larger than everybody else that attacking you would lead to tragic losses for your enemy. Now, I actually skipped the part where we talk about where you unlock the commander. I got so excited about some of these pairings. Um, let me give a couple more pairings and we'll talk about unlocking. A pairing you could use is Joan of Arc, and it's going to benefit everybody. It's going to do Rage Restoration, which is excellent, and all the different types of units are going to get buffed, which is good. There is healing synergy, and like the normal attack damage boost is good. With that said, I feel like the other commander choices are better. You could use Boudica. And that is because Boudica doesn't have a specific type of unit she cares about. She's going to do Rage Restoration. She's going to do damage. She's going to do healing. I mean, she's, you know, hitting on all the things that we want to hit on with a commander here and hits on all the things we want for synergy. And a part of the reason I love Boudica as a commander is that she is so flexible. So with that said, where do you obtain Hannibal Barca? You can only get him from Special Privilege VIP chests. And I believe it's chests... 10 through 14, which is pretty intense. So if we go up to the VIP chest, there it is. VIP chest 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 all have sculptures of Barca. Let me tell you, this is an expensive commander to get, not only because you've got to actually get to the high VIP level, but then you've got to pay for these things. And I believe that it's a hundred bucks, a hundred bucks, 50, 50, and then 20. 
So a total of 320 bucks to max out this commander. With that said, he's incredibly strong. And you can see from the footage that I've linked to several times now, um, several, several different types of footage, that he is a true monster on the battlefield. Very exceptional in that capacity. You cannot use your universal sculptures on Hannibal Barca. Whew. So, my friends, I hope you found this guide to be helpful. Hannibal Barca is a commander that the alphas use, and for good reason. With that said, I really want to caution people that if you are not one of the strongest players in your alliance, you probably shouldn't be the one leading the rallies anyways, and you can use him for open field combat and have a really, really good time with him. But I feel like a lot of players feel like they want to be attacking player cities, and unless you're leading a rally, that is probably not the set of commanders that you should be focusing on. So my friends, I hope you found this helpful. Is there anything I missed? Is there any pairings that you like? There's certainly a lot of other things I could talk about, creative stuff like you know, pairing with Richard the First, or maybe doing something with Martel or Cao Cao. But honestly, um, I would stick to those choices that I mentioned earlier. And until next time, my friends, you have fun smashing the kingdom.